All right, welcome everybody to the part three of the home practice exercise number five. Uh, so this is Deepak Sharma again. So in this exercise, we are trying to do is set up the bank module and set up the sales tax module. So just to recap of what you have done in part, uh, uh, part two of the video was we set up the general ledger, we set up the chart up accounts, and we created a new fiscal year and now what we're doing, going to do is we're going to set up the sales tax and we're going to set up the bank module okay so i'm continuing this exercise from where i left which was uh, creating a new fiscal year now be, uh, before we get into the bank module if you look at right here on your left hand side you see admin services you see common services general ledger but there's nothing like bank ledger or sales tax setting right here so that means i need to activate those modules so to activate you're going to go under the admin services and click on data activation and i'm going to say yes i do have a backup so as soon as you have completed part uh, two part one which was general ledger setup i encourage you guys to do a database down before you start uh, the bank and tax module so right here what you're going to do is you're going to click on the bank services as soon as you click on bank services, it's going to ask you that you need these two programs to run along with the bank module. One is the general ledger sub ledger services, another one is a tax services. So you're gonna say, okay, that's fine, but we know that we need tax services. Next, and it's gonna give you a confirmation saying that we're gonna activate these three. We will click activate. Once it's activated, it's gonna show up that these has been activated and you close that. And now when you see it on your left hand side under the common services you see bank services and tax services the reason it's under common services is because these are the modules that will be linked with the sales uh, with the accounts payable as well as your account receivable so now to set up the bank we are simply going to go into the bank services the very first thing that you're going to do is you're going to set up the actual bank account so in the general ledger, it, tell, it simply tells you that you have a general ledger, uh, a general ledger for the bank account. But it doesn't tell you whether this is a TD bank account or is it an RBC bank account or a Scotia bank account. Now that general that bank account could be consist of three different bank accounts. You don't know, okay? But most of the small companies they like to have as many GL accounts as, uh, that are, that they have the bank account, so they will know exactly how much balance they have but when you are using the sage 300 in this what you're trying to do is you're going to create the actual bank account and link that bank account with the general ledger so in the very first thing that you're going to do in the exercise uh, in exercise 17 step 17 in your exercise you are going to create a td checking account so for that you're going to go into bank services banks here we're going to call this is td checking and here you can name exactly what you want to name it as TD checking account and if you have these different bank accounts in the checking account as well you can put the three digits or four digit of the account numbers as your reference number then here you can put the transit number one two three four five six and a bank number I'm just randomly picking up a number that I give you guys now the reason that you wanted to have these ones because some companies I mean I have worked in a company that use Sage 300 what they do is they actually link this bank account with your actual bank account so it exports and import information directly with the online banking so therefore it is important uh, you can integrate that with the online banking but you need somebody like who has an IT expert to create the link between both of them okay we're not gonna do that but that's something that is that can be done. Here it's gonna ask you what is your next uh, deposit number. We will leave it as one. Uh, write off spread. That means if there's any difference, uh, it will write it off if it's less than one dollar. How many days you need for the clearing? So usually that you will have a list of outstanding checks listed there. If it passed 45 days, it will force you to write them off, okay? But usually the practice is that uh, the checks never get still dated uh, for six months. So you may want to leave it as 180 days so that way 
anybody who has a check, a possession of a check, they can still cash it, okay? But that's internal process. Now this is where you link this account to the actual bank account, okay? Remember one thing that I told you guys with the stage 300 at the beginning? All the module that you're gonna be using in this uh, course, they are all linked with the general ledger account. So if you say this is a TD checking, which bank account does this link with? Is it a, with 1000 account? Write-off, I say, you know what, all the write-off and the credit uh, charges are going to go into the bank charges account. It's uh, 5300. And I'm going to use 5300 for the credit card expenses as well. Address, you can put the address of your bank location. I'm going to skip this. Uh, but if you, or you have, I'll give you guys the address. So let's just put that information here as well. Uh, Toronto, Ontario, and I'm going to skip the postal code. Check stock is an important because if you are printing checks from the system, you want this to be accurate. So in this case, we will put the information that's given to you is Chad, and we in the description we can put that as a check and advice. And the next check number is if you are printing checks, you can put the check number. If you're not printing check, you still put the check number as one zero zero one, and it will be a combined check and advice. Now in the check form. You can pick whatever form that you think you, you what are you using it for. Well, there is. So I'm just gonna pick the very first one that's available. Uh, but it's not because we're not gonna print the checks, right? If you are printing checks, so the the, the checks that you order should have a check form, and you pick the ones that that are relevant for that check, so that we could print it print it correctly. Taxes. We don't have the taxes set up yet, so we can skip this part. Balance, now this will tell you what is the balance in the bank account, right? So this is the balance in this module. It doesn't mean it will be the same in the general ledger, but in a practical way, they both should agree with each other. Once you're done, you click Add, and you set up your bank. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna change the bank options. So we're gonna go into the bank setups and look at the options company here you can put whoever is in charge for the bank module they can put uh, their name processing what is your default bank account if you have more than one bank account you can select one of the account as a default so that anytime you receive a deposit or making a payment it will automatically show up that bank account and now we can leave everything as default if you are recording transaction the bank module you can create a default distribution code there as well. Document, we're gonna leave everything as it is. If you want the uh, bank entry numbers or transfer numbers to start from a particular sequence, you can do that right here. You click save and close. Then what I'm going to ask you guys in step number 19 is ask you to create a distribution code to record a bank loan. So you have a bank loan that you received and what I want you to do is I want you to record that bank loan under the bank module so in that case, I need to create a distribution code. So I can just create a distribution code as a loan. And then here under the description, I say loan from bank. And the link account that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link this to the bank loan account because I know that anytime I receive a loan, it will go to this bank account. Whenever I make a payment for the loan, it will also go to the same bank account. So I close that. Distribution sets uh, is usually commonly used if you have a transaction that you want to combine together. You can use the distribution sets. If you have a credit card that you're using in a company, you can select that right here. We don't going to use that, uh, neither I'll ask you guys to do anything. Once you're done with that, what I want you to do is, now because you have the bank module, I don't want anybody to record any entries in the bank account in the journal ledger right the reason is that remember what I told you is the general ledger is always a mirror picture of all the all the modules right so if you have a bank module all the entries that need to be recorded should be coming out from those modules not in the general ledger because the information flows from the bank module into the general ledger it doesn't go from general ledger to the 
bank module. So therefore, it's important that nobody posts any entries in the bank in the journal ledger, okay? So to control that, what I have to do is I have to make that bank account as a control account. So I'm gonna find the bank account, which is this. I'm gonna make this a control account. Whenever you make an account as a control account, it's gonna ask you that this is controlled by which subledger? We're gonna say this is controlled by BK subledger, which is the bank subledger, and click that. Now, if you try to post any entry into the general, from your general ledger into this account, it will give you an error, right? So that is the whole purpose for you to have a control account. So it's always gonna have the entries coming from the general ledger and nobody will mess up the accounts in the general ledger for those. Now in step number 21, what I want you to do is, I want you to record a, pay, a cash receipt of the loan. So you applied for a bank loan of $50,000 from TD and the TD approved it and now you have $50,000 that came into your bank account. Now, the way you can record that is you can either record that into the general ledger or you can record that into the bank ledger, bank module. If I post that into the general ledger, it's never, it's not gonna post the entry in the bank module. So, but if I post any entry in the bank ledger, it will send a badge in the general ledger to post them into the general ledger as well. So always the information is gonna flow from the ma other module to the general ledger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into a bank transaction and here I'm gonna do is a bank entry. This is how you record a bank entry. And here it's gonna say, I'm gonna to create a new batch. So here I'm gonna say loan receipt. And TD. And then here it's saying, oh, which bank account is it going to? It's going into TD checking. And the bank entry, there are two types of entries we have. There is a withdraw or a deposit. So we receive their loan, so it's a deposit. And when did we receive it? We received it on January the 5th. And uh, well, to record that, I'm gonna use the distribution code as a loan. And see, it automatically shows up at the bank loan account and put the amount at 50,000. So now think about the journal entry that you're saying it's a deposit, that means you know it's TD bank account is a debit and credit to the bank loan and you click add. Once you click add, this entry has been recorded. If you want to delete, you can delete it. If you want to post it, you click post. So here what we want to do is we want to post this entry. You click post. Now I give you a confirmation saying this entry has been posted and you close it and you close it. Okay. So now that entry has been posted in the bank module. Now, if you go into a GL transaction, look at the batch list, see, this entry came here as well, right? But that we need to post, well, we'll post them at the end once you finish everything. Okay, so this will be the end of the bank module. Now, once the bank module is ready, your bank account is ready, the next thing that I wanna do is the set up the taxes. Now, to set up the taxes, I go into tax services, and I have to set up everything in the order, okay? So it's important that when you're setting up the text, this only happens once uh, when you set up the, the system. So it has to be done in the same way that you see it in this, on the screen. So you set up the tax authority first, then you set up the tax classes, then you set up the tax rates. Once your tax rates are set up, then you group them based on how, or how, how do you report them. If you are doing business with different provinces, you wanna group them, Ontario, BC, Alberta, and then assign the appropriate groups to the different authorities. So now to do that, in this company, we are, I kept it very simple, that you are only doing a business in Ontario, so therefore you only need to, need to set up the Ontario tax rate, which is 13%. So here we go into our tax authorities, and I create a tax authorities as HST, now we'll call this as harmonized sales tax. No reporting. It's not ongoing on the retained document. Everything leave as default. Tax base is always a selling price and it's done at the invoice level. A low tax in the price? No, that is not the case uh, uh, in, in Ontario. 
because uh, you pay taxes on the price that's not within the price in Europe is different because their taxes are built in the price now when you come to the accounts remember everything has a link to the GL account so we have two accounts is a tax liability which is HST on payable so this one is HST payable Now what you need to do is you need to come right here and create this uh, journal bank account. So this so this tax liability account is HST on purchases, tax recovery. So now is this tax is recoverable? HST is always recoverable. Whatever you pay on the expenses. So this is HST liabilities, HST on purchases actually. HST on sales is the tax liability account. Recoverable is what you pay on the expenses. So this is HST on purchases. You click add. Once you add it, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna click add and now this tax code has been added and you close it. The next step we're going to do is tax classes. So now we're going to create the different tax classes. So we have HST as the tax authority. So here we need to create, you can have as many tax classes. In this case, I'm just keeping it very simple that there is taxable and there is non taxable. Usually in a real business, there are three categories. One is taxable, another one is non-taxable, another one is a zero rated, okay? So the difference between non-taxable and zero rated, they're both zero percent, so I will say, you know what, let's just keep it simple and only have two of them. So we did this for sales and customer, click save. Now I have to do the same thing for sales and item. We have to do the same thing here, taxable. and non-taxable and save so we done HST sales customer sales item now I'm gonna do is purchases I'm gonna do purchases vendors again I'm gonna do taxable and non-taxable save now I'm gonna do purchases and item and do the same thing as well taxable and non-taxable and save now once that part is done you go into the tax rate so now you have to set up the tax rates so again you have to set up the tax rate for the sales and purchases so we say HST sales how much is taxable 13 percent non-taxable is zero and non-taxable is zero save and then you're gonna have to do the same thing with the purchases taxable is 13 percent I'm just gonna refer to the test book to see how this is supposed to be linked because this one it is as a taxable and then this says non-taxable so let's look at quickly on your chapter uh, 9 and I don't want to give you guys anything wrong so you come right here under the tax rates so you simply only entering the tax table which is 30% right here the rest of them is all zero so we did that for sales and purchases now we set up the tax rate and the last thing that we want to do is a tax groups so here we're going to say the tax group, we are setting up for Ontario and we are doing it for sales and here you have to pick up the tax authority. So Ontario is HST, add and you do the same thing with the purchases as well and that will be on HST2. Okay, and uh, the other thing I wanted to confirm is it sell uh, taxes by summary? The answer is yes, it's not the detail, it goes with the 
total amount you don't have to go in the greater detail of the uh, of the item so it goes as a total okay so now you set up the Ontario tax group now this part is done so that's that means your taxes are set up if you wanted to pull pull up a report I didn't say anything in the in this task that you need to uh, do any printing of these reports but if you do want to print a report what you can do is go into tax reports I uh, suggest you to print the tax groups there is only a one group and you have to print for both of them sales and purchases I can do it just for the sales so that way you guys can see it how it looks but you don't need to print it see here there's Ontario what taxes we have is HST if you have more than one you just select them and it will show up everything there okay but you don't need to print anything you're simply doing it so that way it's ready for you in the accounts payable module so this was the part three of video of your home practice exercise number five and in this exercise what you have done is you have set up the bank account for TD checking and you posted an entry for the loan payment that you received and then once we finished it we went into uh, the general ledger account we make the account bank account as a control account with the bank ledger and then we went into a tax services and we set up the tax rate for Ontario the HST at 13% okay so this will be the end of the uh, end of the second not second the third video which is the part two of this exercise setting up the bank and sales tax okay good luck everybody and I will see you guys in the next video which is the part four of home practice exercise that will be the final video of this exercise thank you everybody and have a great day bye